Hello my YouTube friends, my content is getting suggested by YouTube a lot more these days. And I have all of you amazing viewers to thank for that. The thumbs up and the comments really do help. But going along with all those YouTube suggestions, I get a lot of people who are really new to live streaming and don't even know what OBS is. So this video's for them. It's all about what OBS is and what you can do with it. Those questions are gonna be answered today. So let's get to it. My goal with this channel is to help make people better live streamers and entertain a bit in the process. So please take a second and leave me a comment down below to let me know how I'm doing. And while you're there, click that thumbs up. It really does help to supercharge YouTube's algorithm. And if you're not subscribed, please do and click that bell. It helps me to be able to continue to make awesome content that helps you. So thanks. OBS is the acronym for Open Broadcast Software. And sometimes you may see it referred to as OBS Studio as well. It's a totally free open source program that has two main uses. The first use is live streaming to any platform like YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, or you can also stream it to your own website or any other platform as well. The streaming features are used by amateurs and professionals alike to create broadcasts by educators, churches, entertainers, comics, magicians, and gamers, and a host of DJs and musicians. The other main use is screen and camera video and audio recording. This feature can be used to create content for commercial and entertainment use, and you're definitely going to see it used in entertainment, education, for podcasts, for YouTube, Facebook, and anywhere else that video or audio is needed. And OBS is supported by an open source community that build all kinds of awesome add-ons and plugins to help you do just about anything you can imagine to create absolutely amazing content. And the best part is, it's all totally free. Now because OBS is so powerful, it also comes with a reputation for being difficult to use and complicated. Admittedly, if you try to do too much too soon, OBS can certainly overwhelm you. But the basics are really simple and easy. You can be up and live streaming in no time at all with just the basics and learn the rest as you go. Here's a quick overview for streaming with OBS. This display box right here is where all of our scenes are going to be displayed. And then right here is where we can create our scenes. And you can have multiple different ones and switch between them. Sources is where we populate those scenes with video, audio, and other things like cameras. Then our audio mixer is going to show the audio that's in the current scene that is selected. We have scene transitions here, which is a transition that you can run in between scenes. Then we have start streaming, start recording, and the other button you're gonna be interested in here is settings. We're gonna go into the settings and set up our scene. There's nothing you need to worry about on general. We're gonna go into stream. If we drop this down, you can see the most popular streaming locations. And we're gonna go ahead and select YouTube. But if I click show all, you can see there are just hundreds of different locations that you can stream to, including your own website if you add it in here. We're gonna click get stream key and it's gonna take us right into our YouTube page and all you have to do is click copy right here and then we can close that and close that and go into here and just paste our stream key now we don't need to worry about this ignore thing we're just gonna go into our output page now here on output is where the magic happens we're gonna select advanced and what we're gonna do is you drop down the encoder and if you have a specialized encoder on your graphics card it's gonna be shown here in my case I have the Nvidia one most of you will probably have the h264 or X264 encoder. Now I'll select the NVIDIA just to show you that the settings are basically the same. We're gonna change our bit rate. In this case, since we're going to be doing a high def stream, that's 1920 by 1080, we wanna set it to around 6,000. Anywhere between 5,000 and 6,000 is good for an HD stream. And we're gonna drop this preset down. Anything we grab on the preset that's below quality will have a lower quality image, but it will process faster and be easier for your computer. So Quality is very good and high quality is obviously very, very good, but they are going to tax your computer more. So if you notice that you're having problems with dropping frames and things like that, you may want to lower your preset in here so that your computer has an 
easier time. Now these two check boxes down here for look ahead and psycho visual tuning are things that you would use if you are a gamer trying to stream at 60 frames per second. If you have a lot of activity on the screen, these will maximize the ability for your computer to be able to go ahead and encode that stuff properly. Since I don't do any gaming on my streams, I go ahead and uncheck these. There is not really usually a lot of visual stuff happening on the scene, so it's just fine. Now most of you will be using the X264 encoder if you don't have a video card. And so you can basically leave all the settings the same, but you're gonna wanna go ahead and change your bit rate to 5,000 or 6,000 if you're doing HD. If you're doing 720, you can set it at 3,000. That is perfectly fine, but we're gonna go ahead and leave it at 6,000. Now down here, we have our CPU usage, and this is just like our preset in reverse. The higher you go on here, the faster your computer is going to be able to process it, but also the less quality you're going to get. We're going to leave it on very fast, which is reasonably good quality, and it will encode relatively quickly. If you find you're dropping frames, go higher. Go higher than very fast. Just be aware that you're going to lose a little bit of quality. Now, you can also adjust your bitrate down a little bit in order to help your computer out in this range as well. But when you're live streaming, you got to kind of do a little bit of testing to see what your machine can handle. I'm going to click apply, and then I'm going to go into the audio Tab. And I want to make sure that my audio is all disabled up here in the global audio devices. I just want to go down here to advanced and I want to set my monitoring device to whatever I'm listening to my stream on. Now, if I'm listening through my headphones because I have guests or something like that, I want to make sure I can hear them. So I'm going to set my monitoring device and more often than not, you're going to want to set your monitoring device to headphones of some sort. So make sure you find your headphones in your monitoring device and select that. And the reason why you want to be listening through your headphones Phones is because if it's playing through your speakers, your microphone is going to pick that up and it's going to cause a feedback loop. So if you're wondering why you're listening to your live stream or your audience is telling you your live stream is repeating, it's because you are using a monitoring device that's feeding back into your microphone. At least that's one problem. Next, we're going to go into video and we want to make sure that our video is set to the proper resolution that we're going to be streaming at. And if that's 1920 by 1080, these both should be set at that. If it's 720, these both should be set at that. If they're not both set the same, you are just making it more difficult for your computer to process your stream, which can cause all sorts of problems. The other thing that you need to be aware of here is your frames per second. You can go down here and select 30 frames per second, or if you're gaming, you're probably gonna wanna select 60 frames per second. Just keep in mind that the higher your frames per second are, the more powerful computer you're going to need to run it. Once you're done, you wanna click apply and then okay. The next thing we're gonna do is kind of populate a live stream. So we can go live. So we have this default scene that's just called scene and we're gonna right click on it and we're gonna rename it and I'm just gonna call it main. And now we're gonna put some stuff in that scene by clicking the plus under sources and we're gonna add a video capture device. We're gonna call this camera and you wanna get in the habit of naming your stuff so you know what it is. Once we're in here, we're gonna drop it down. I'm gonna select my camera. In this case, it's a cam link. And then I'm gonna change it to custom and I'm gonna select the resolution so I know that it's right. Now, if you have a webcam, you can actually adjust the visual settings on your webcam by clicking right here and it'll give you the opportunity to configure it. Just be aware that that stuff resets every time you open it up. The last thing we're going to want to do is go down here and select a custom audio device and then we're going to select the actual microphone that we're using. In this case, I'm using the one directly off my camera, which is called CamLink. And there we go. And now we can see in our audio mixer that our microphone is working. And I can adjust the volume of the microphone by using this slider right here. If I click the speaker, it will turn that microphone on and off or mute the microphone. And if I select this little gear over here, I can go into advanced audio properties. And really all you need to know in here is you can adjust your audio monitoring. So by default, it's set to monitoring off, which means you're not going to hear it through your monitoring device. But if I select monitor only, that means the stream's not gonna hear it only me and if I select monitor and output that means the stream and me through my headphones are going to hear it so that's how you adjust where you're monitoring your audio so we can see we have a simple scene called main and we have source in that scene which is just our camera which is connected to an audio device let's create another scene I'm gonna click the plus and I'm gonna call this scene video and I'm just gonna click the plus here and I'm gonna go ahead and add a media source what I'm gonna do is go in here and browse and I'm gonna go ahead 
and find a video that I want to play on my live stream and I can just click open and if it's a short clip I can click loop it'll play over and over again I can even adjust the speed in here but I'm just gonna click OK and there we go we have a video playing of some video footage now I can adjust the properties and filters up here and I can also pause it play it and I can use the slider to advance it if I want now I'm gonna add my camera so I'm just gonna go back to video capture device and you can see that it's already in there so we're just gonna select it and there we go now we can just resize the camera and move it anywhere we want in this scene it's that easy to build simple scenes and now when we switch back and forth you can see it cuts between one scene and the other it's that easy to build a live stream so we're gonna add one more thing we're gonna click the plus and we're gonna call this one display and click OK because maybe we want to play a game or we want to show a tutorial so then we're gonna click the plus under sources and we're gonna go to display capture and click OK and now we're gonna just drop it down and select our display this display is 720 so I'm just gonna kind of resize it I can use the arrow keys to center it up a little bit and what if we wanted to hear the audio that's playing on our desktop maybe we want to have the game audio or something like that what we can do to capture our desktop audio is go to our audio output capture and we'll just call this desktop audio and we're gonna click OK now this is gonna capture anything that's playing on our computer and we want to select where the audio is playing so if we have all our audio playing through headphones we'll select that if it's playing through the speakers we're gonna select that and let's just start an audio source so we can see that it works so I'm gonna go down here I'm just gonna start Spotify and we'll put it up on our second monitor so we can see it and when we click play we can see it's playing directly through our audio mixer so we can adjust the volume we can mute it we can also go into advanced audio properties and we can decide where we want this to be heard do we want to hear it in our headphones do we just want the stream to hear it we can decide that as well you can see when we press play or we stop it it starts and stops our audio mixer audio as well and just keep in mind that anything that plays on your desktop is going to be heard using this method to capture the audio so now that we have a pretty good idea how this works all we would have to do is go over here on the right and click start streaming and during our live stream we can go ahead and choose whatever scenes we want we can switch between scenes and we can add any of those audio sources or anything into any of these scenes it's that easy to create a live stream to record with OBS for podcast or video content it's pretty easy as well here's a quick overview of that recording is very much just like live streaming we're gonna go into to settings and we're gonna go to our output tab and then we're gonna select the recording button here and if you don't see this you want to make sure that your output mode is set to advanced and then we want to click browse and we can choose the location we want our stuff to be saved to now we can go here and we can decide how we want our recording to be saved if you select mp4 just be aware that if something happens and OBS crashes you do lose access to that file whereas if you select something like FLV you don't lose access to it now here I like to go and I want to select my encoder I want to be specific so that I have the opportunity to set everything up so in my case I'm using the Nvidia encoder but you may have the x264 one the important thing here is that you want to set your bit rate and you want to set your CPU usage just like you did when you decided what you wanted to live stream at now your bit rate is going to be much higher for recorded video so instead of 6,000 we're going to be using 60,000 or 50,000 somewhere in between 50,000 and 60,000 bit rate is gonna give you really high quality video recording and now we're ready to go all we have to do is go over here on the right and click start recording and it's going to record that file to our hard drive directory that we set it to and you can switch scenes and do all of the same things that you would do in your live broadcast exactly the same and this makes it really really easy to record your desktop record your camera or anything else that you want to record on your computer what are you looking to use OBS for let me know about your project in the comments and if you want to dig a bit deeper and create a full live broadcast free and easy check this video out and if you're always looking for tools tips and tricks that can help make you a better live streamer or youtuber subscribe to the channel it's totally free my name is Michael Fire Jr thank you so much for watching have a great day and I'll see you in the next one